All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. Sorry there have not been videos. I have been sick since basically the new year, but now we are uh, good enough to do some videos. So there's a lot of catching up to do. Uh, first and foremost, let's get this talking about the Grimoire. This is the new weapon, of course, from the Whispers in the Walls quest. Uh, and there is a lot to go over with it as it has a lot of different uses. And I also kind of want to address some of the sentiments I've seen around this weapon in terms of its performance, because I think that people are kind of shitting on this weapon when they really shouldn't be. Uh, so, to just jump into this real quickly, uh, this weapon has special mods. So, this has its own suite of eight mods that are only for the Grimoire, uh, or at least this first Grimoire. Uh, we don't know if that'll be applied to any maybe further books in the future, which is entirely possible. But for now, this is the only weapon in the game that can use the invocations and the canticles. Uh, quickly, because you're going to need this information uh, just to go over these, uh, this is an unlimited fire weapon. It shoots a little exploding balls, little fireballs essentially, I guess. Well, electric balls more like. Uh, and then its alt fire is a big ball that hits enemies a bunch of times and goes quite a distance, as you can see. So that's the, the firing style of this. It's going to be important whenever we're discussing these special mods. Uh, first and foremost, we have two types of these special mods. They're invocations and canticles. Canticles are Exilus slot available, uh, and invocations are not. You can have one of each. You cannot equip just all the invocations, which would be insane whenever you know what they do. Um, and you can't equip all of the canticles either. You only get one. So you have to pick wisely. Generally speaking, these are the two that I find to be the best, which is the Zada Invocation, which is our alternate fire, grants one energy regen for 20 seconds for each enemy hit, um, and that stacks up to 10 times. Basically meaning that this is an insanely powerful energy battery. It is twice as strong as the maximum level of Xenerix Wellspring, um, and it is extremely easy to keep it going. So, for basically any Warframe that doesn't have an ability that they are always channeling, because that will, of course, not work with this, uh, you can just top yourself off up on energy just by switching to this weapon, throwing out an alt fire at a couple guys, uh, and that will sustain you pretty much no matter what through a mission. 10 energy a second is pretty hard to beat, um, and this is going to fill most Warframe's gas tank right up. The other invocations, before we get into the canticles, uh, are all a similar flavor with just a different thing that they do. Uh, Riss is the alternate fire, increases ability duration by 4% for 20 seconds for each enemy hit, and that stacks up to 15 times. Uh, and then Vohm is just that, but for strength, and Netra is that, but for efficiency. So, either way, for each of these, you can either get 60% duration, 60% strength, or 60% efficiency. Of these three, I think, in general, strength is going to be the most popular and most used one of them. Because, of course, you know, hitting certain strength thresholds and such gives you quite a lot to do. Uh, and this is just another way to get to some of those thresholds uh, for Warframes that might have trouble or might have like weird builds in some cases that need to uh, get around some limits. Or especially for newer players uh, that don't have access to, you know, all these like, big fully leveled prime mods and such to hit those uh, different thresholds, this could be really useful. Otherwise, uh, ability duration is not usually something that we would like seek out a stat stick for, but I could definitely see that being like a possible thing that you would go for. Um, maybe if you wanted to be like more lazy on your Zaku build or something like that, uh, I could see maybe using this, uh, for Netra, the efficiency, usually we balance efficiency on a build whenever we're like making it. But if you were really considering this, you could like dump efficiency more, uh, on a like mostly channeled ability, important Warframe. Uh, and then you'd be able to snapshot this and essentially have that lowered cost of that ability permanently while that channeled ability is still active. So that's a potential use for this that could come up. In general, I think all of the invocations have their place. They are all very good um, and, you know, are a good amount of choice here. The three that are ability stats are V polarities, and then the Zada is the one that is a dash polarity. Now to talk about the canticles. These are all uh, Exilus effects, and I will say before we even start talking about these, I really, really wish that these were worded a little differently. So... Jahu Canticle is killing enemies, reduces the armor and shields of other enemies with an affinity range by 5%. So, immediately, very interesting. However, this is killing enemies that have been dealt damage by the Grimoire, <clears throat> reduces the armor and shields of other enemies with an affinity range by 5%. You do have to tag the enemies in order to get this 
uh, to reduce the armor. There were a number of bugs where certain abilities would like count for this. You could use like Geyer, and Geyer was having a fantastic time with that, or just holding the book. Uh, so it would be nice if this was, you know, a little more wordy maybe, but was a little more clear with what it is. Or alternatively, uh, making it so that just holding the book gives you this effect would be really interesting and would be a super interesting option for armor stripping for a number of different Warframes. Uh, that obviously would not work on single targets very well, but would work for just like clearing squads and such. Geyer in particular, because I've seen it work, would really love for that to be the case. Uh, but unfortunately, yes, you do have to hit them all with the Grimoire, which is not super hard. And it really benefits the Grimoire if you're just killing a bunch of enemies with it. Because if you kill 20 guys in a room with the Grimoire, the 20 guys that were on their way to the room, because affinity range is quite large, will show up with no armor. Uh, and that just makes killing those guys easier, which then, the new guys that spawned, affinity range away, don't have any armor when they finally show up. Uh, so this can kind of lead to like a cascading effect that makes the Grimoire's usage much, much easier. And in general, this is usually what I would go for. Other canticles, though, because they are pretty different, is killing enemies within, uh, killing enemies grants allies within affinity range, 30% fire rate for 15, 15 seconds. Once again, killing enemies with this, with with enemies that have been tagged with the Grimoire, uh, while you still have it equipped, is the, what gives this out. And it's 30% fire rate. Mostly, this, you would only consider this for the Grimoire, but because fire rate is an excellent stat for the Grimoire, if you don't like the Jahu effect, uh, then the Loke effect, I think, is probably the second best one. Then the others we have are the Foss Canticle, which is killing enemies, grants allies in affinity range, 40% shield recharge rate, and minus 28% shield recharge delay for 15 seconds. In general, I wouldn't be trying to proc a little better survivability. Uh, I usually like to just have the survivability already figured out on my build uh, without needing to have like enemy kills every 15 seconds dictating if I have a little more survivability or not. So for me, not a fan of this one, but it's interesting at the very least. Uh, and then the Craw Canticle, which is enemies have a 12% chance to drop a universal orb on death, which once again... If this was just, if I'm holding the book, enemies who die have a 12% chance to drop a universal orb. Pretty interesting. That gives me both health and energy, which are, it's basically an extra energy orb uh, at a 12% drop chance, which would be quite nice. But again, you do need to hit the enemies with the Grimoire in order to have that effect be procced. So it's much less good because of that. I will say, if you're only planning on using the Grimoire, uh, if you generate energy using this alongside the Zada invocation instead of this, because you won't be taking much advantage of this if you're never killing enemies with the Grimoire, um, is still probably generally at least going to be a little better as it's like a little bit of extra energy that you could be getting out of the enemies that you do tag whenever you're activating the Zada. Uh, but in general, I don't think that's going to be such a huge consideration. Uh, but I would say probably overall... Uh, the, the, well... If it, if, it, if it were worded this way and meant this, where it just has enemies have this effect if you're holding the book, um, this one would probably be the best one. Uh, but as it stands, it's fine. I probably wouldn't run it over Loke or Jahu, just because the armor stripping is useful for actually using the book in general. Anyhow, uh, in terms of how the build changes, uh, this is, of course, a six-forma build. I'm, like, in very deep on this. I have the new Primed Convulsion along with Primed Heated Charge and Pistol Pestilence to make us Corrosive Heat. Heat, of course, for Cascadia Flare to get a bunch of damage. Uh, and this does a lot of damage. Shocker, I know. Four Prime mods plus, you know, special mods and dif the Galvanized Diffusion and so on and so forth will do that. It'll turn out... Turns out it'll get you there. Um, but we are... Reminder, down a DPS mod. This is just a pure utility mod, and this also is mostly utility, so keep that in mind whenever we're doing the damage test. Um, but overall, you don't need Prime Convulsion. If you missed this just recently, don't worry about it. Just throw Jolt on here. The 60-60 is also good. The little bit of enhanced status from that is arguably a little better for building up Flare uh, more quickly, but I usually find that the alt fire builds up Flare very fast anyhow. Uh, so I felt like going for the higher damage with Convulsion was good. Also worth noting that you do not have to spend this Forma, and this is a, this becomes a 5 Forma build instead, uh, if you just drop down Prime Convulsion uh, down to that Jolt. And of course, if you don't have Prime Heated Charge, that's another Forma off the build too. I'm just putting that Dual Stat Heat mod in here. Uh, and of course, if you just like you know don't have Prime Pistol Gambit maxed out, which a lot of people don't, you could of course just use 
the uh, other crit mod, which is uh, Creeping Bullseye, which we will actually see in this version of the build. So on builds that are going to use one of the uh, ability buffs, of course, that is a V polarity. So things need to be swapped around a little bit, which is that we're going to be using Creeping Bullseye instead. The minus 20% fire rate is unfortunate because this is, you know, fire rate really greatly benefits us on this weapon. But there's not really any other way to fit it uh, if you wanted this build to work, essentially. Uh, and, yeah, you know, I think that we want that. So between the two, essentially, if you're going to be getting energy, which I think most people are going to want, it'll look like this. And then just a small swap around in order to get any of the other stats if you happen to need them for any specific build. Uh, and all of the invocations can just swap into here as needed. Of course, there is one more option, which is just not to use the invocations, and that is this build that I have not invested the seventh forma in because I see no reason for me to make that build, and it's extremely unlikely that anyone should ever make that build. Uh, worth noting that this is almost certainly going to be a V polarity, which for these other builds you'll notice will still work because this is where Pistol Pestilence goes. Uh, if you put a V polarity here, Generally speaking, the best thing you can put there is going to be an Expel mod, one of the primed ones, uh, because Banes are just extremely, extremely good. Uh, besides that, something like Hornet Strike is probably the play here to get some of that upfront damage to make it easier uh, to build up if you're going to go for like Deadhead, for example, or something instead of Flare. Uh, but yeah, overall, I really wouldn't suggest just going all in on DPS. This weapon, I think in general, if you're going to use it long term, really wants to get into the Invocations and the Canticles. Speaking of the invocations and canticles, because I know people are going to want to know where they come from, uh, they come from the new mirror defense mode, and they are only in rotation C. So, that sucks, first and foremost, uh, to speak on what I think of the drop rates there. They're terrible. Uh, they are very, very rare from that game mode, and that game mode doesn't really reward much else. They are also the full set of them in the market for like 120 platinum so it is faster to farm pretty much anything else worth platinum and get the full set of them from the market rather than ever play the game mode they come from which i don't like don't like that that sucks uh the mirror defense the new one kind of needs to be improved and probably give a currency so that you can get these in some guaranteed kind of amount of time as opposed to probably taking fucking forever um but for the time being, you could just like sell a few things to other players and just buy the pack out of the market. I do not like that. That is bad. But it is the advice that I would give to you if you want to get all of the invocations and all of the canticles in the fastest manner possible. So to quickly show off the weapon, uh, it is worth noting I do have Helios and he does have Tenacious Bond. That's going to be important because I'm going to show some other weapons to compare this with. And I would use Tenacious Bond with all of those weapons. Uh, so that's why Helios is here. These are 20 Corrupted Heavy Gunners with the Steel Path modifier. I'll be invincible, but their AI is paused. Uh, and I just want to show what the damage level looks like on this weapon. Please keep in mind, this is level 200 Steel Path Corrupted Heavy Gunners. For a weapon that you get from a quest. Okay? These are much tougher than anything that's going to spawn in the new Netracells mission. Um, except for maybe, I suppose, the Necromex that can spawn in there. They will technically be harder to kill because of their inherent DR. Um, but these are some of the toughest enemies that players are probably not really usually going to see, and I want that to be taken into account because uh, this is just going to show kind of an overall DPS that you're going to get. I want to compare it to some of its contemporaries, let's say. Of course, firing the all-fire out there. Uh, and you can see how fast <clears throat> the bar on the bottom here recharges. Which, of course, we're throwing out pretty much every time it recharges. And that is, of course, charging up our uh, our flare, which is actually charging a little slower than usual. And you can see the kind of rate of, you know, the rate of kills we're getting here. Obviously, if I specifically, like, always, like, you know, aim for headshots, this weapon looks a lot better. Uh, but in general, I think people are just going to be kind of firing it down hallways. So I kind of want to show, you know, at least a little bit of both. Uh, because it'll be comparable to some of the other weapons that we show later. But yeah, if you do decide to go for the headshots, it's quite nice. 
Uh, you can also see here, because of each of these enemies dying, all these enemies are getting their armor reduced by 5% per enemy. And you won't see the complete armor reduction here, but you will see that sliding scale uh, of it being like much, much easier to kill each successive one. Uh, and that's not just because of Cascadia Flare. That is also because, like, you know, by this point, their armor has been reduced by, like, a very significant chunk. Uh, obviously, there's 20 of these enemies, so you'll never see no armor. Uh, but it is worth noting that's why these enemies are getting so progressively easier and easier and easier to kill. And that's that canticle going to work. So that, as you can see, pretty slow for what you're used to seeing, especially considering my last two videos for the Mesa and Saren videos. But I wanted to show very specifically a good comparison for how good this weapon is. Uh, and that comparison is going to be with the Kuva Nucor. So this is the Kuva Nucor. This is kind of the usual build. This is using Cascadia Flare. So it will tra charge up actually much faster than the Grimoire did there. And this is kind of like, you know, with your, your usual build that you'd probably put together on the Kuva Nucor, I would say. Uh, although my Kuva Nucor is not like the perfect... Um, like element i think this is like a, it's like a radiation one still or whatever it's like a 33 so keep in mind it's not an optimal kuva nucor uh and you know back whenever the kuva nucor was the best weapon in the, like the secondary slot that you could equip it didn't matter uh but it is worth noting it is not the optimal one with that though you can see the kind of rate that we're getting here for killing these enemies is this weapon obviously is very good still. This weapon is not a bad weapon. Uh, and it's unlikely that the Kuva Nucor will maybe ever be a bad weapon. But I just wanted to show, like, kind of what, what you'd be expecting from what we would previously consider to be one of the strongest weapons in Warframe. No contest. Best weapon in your secondary slot uh, not very long ago. And I think that the Grimoire, generally speaking, compares relatively favorably with this. Obviously, the Grimoire is slower. But it's offering like a ton of utility and the damage that it's putting out is not bad uh and it can be built you know similarly cheaply in terms of like it's lower level builds working similarly to the higher level builds like you're not gonna suddenly like just because you added the prime mods make all the like all the, the difference in the world um but i wanted to show this because i think that we're getting kind of used to using the incarnate weapons which are rewards from arguably the hardest content in the entire game also notably i'm almost out of ammo on the kuva nucor i have 19 remaining um but this is this you know previously like best meta secondary in the game killing those enemies and i just don't want people to uh, compare it only to the recent weapons i've been showing like the furious which by the way has a, a new build you're gonna see more of this soon uh, but it's a new build for the Furious. But this is, like, you know, one of the weapons that I would consider to be among the single, you know, best in the game. Like, if I'm doing, like, really, really insanely hard content, this is the weapon I'm bringing. And, like, put very simply, uh, there are weapons that need to bridge you to get to this point of having the Incarnans. Uh, and it's very unlikely that... Um, that weapons that are going to come from the story are going to suddenly compare to the incarnate weapons that we get at the very ass end of the video game. So I just wanted to put into perspective that the Grimoire is a quite solid secondary, but it's not competing with the incarnans. It's just simply not going to be a dual toxicist incarnan, a furious incarnan. It's not going to be, you know, as powerful as the Latum, but it's available pretty considerably sooner than most of those options, with the Latum being kind of the exception for those of you that are MR14. Um, and it has really solid utility options to go along with it as well. So I just wanted to make sure that that was, you know, said that this weapon is not performing poorly. Some of us have just gotten used to how insanely strong the Incarnan weapons are because we went through and earned all of them and are kind of only using those in a lot of cases now. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to touch on that as an important point for kind of gauging how good is the Grimoire, because I think it is a fantastic secondary, uh, that if you get the mods for it as a, like, you know, newer-ish player is going to be very, very useful as an energy generator for a lot of your Warframes, uh, making it so you could branch out to things that aren't Xeneric in some areas where you might not otherwise be, say, if you wanted to level Matarai and get some of those skills unlocked while doing, like, let's say Cascade, for example, you could very much get that done. Uh, and I think that it is just overall an excellent addition to the game. I hope we get more books and, like, maybe more canticles and all that kind of stuff. Because I think they're super interesting. Um, but, yeah, I really like the Grimoire. Uh, worth noting, 
because generally you do build this corrosive if you do put it on a warframe uh that is using the new green shards like for example my revenant now there will be a video on that don't worry there's going to be a revenant builds update uh but if you do put it on a warframe that does have green shards it does look much much more impressive and if you are in that case i would say putting the fire rate onto the grimoire is probably going to be your best bet uh, because it does stack up corrosive quite fast and then whenever you get that gun you know things look much much better for it whenever you're just ripping the armor off completely with it it turns out we weapon better when it remove all armor uh as opposed to whenever it sometimes remove all armor uh, from enemies that are uh, like a bit further away as you can see it's you know it's just it's just it's just simply much more impressive there's not like a damage bonus that's being applied here this is really just the green shards um oh actually this this there is actually another damage bonus being applied i just realized uh it is notable that i should remove that oh wait no it's not this is this is the old build but oh, we're good never mind yeah that was actually just the armor strip i thought that was the other buff that we'll talk about later with the new revenant build uh but yeah that's that, that's what you're looking at if you decide to be a, a green shards warframe that maybe also needs more strength or something like that the grimoire is going to perform very very well for you in that case um so yeah that is also a consideration uh so with that uh let's take this thing into the steel path for a good minute uh and uh kind of just show how it works on just some regular old dudes all right away we go uh notably uh, i know i've been bringing revenant a lot recently uh, whenever we show off weapons and such, uh, that's going to become Neja now because Revenant has green shards. So that's obviously not going to give you a very normal representation of how the weapon looks in usual missions without adding a bunch of stuff. Uh, so yeah, of course, notable that we are um, we are going to be on just just normal stuff, no green shards. <laughs> And we'll just have the three on here. <clears throat> of course, just to uh, keep me safe. But it's not like Neja exactly has uh, trouble surviving. Also, you can see here the enemies that are just, like showing up armor stripped at this point. And even enemies that like, I mean, if, if you have, you know, show up and enemies have like most of their armor gone, uh, that's like a pretty big deal. So, like the first few enemies we're fighting while we're building up flare and whatnot uh pose way way more of a threat than the enemies later just because as we move through the level like you know enemies will be continually weakened by the enemies that were killed before them yeah if the, if this effect um was just for holding the book. I think there's actually a whole host of Warframes uh, that would really gravitate towards the book and then like free up their um, their subsume slot before something that like isn't an armor strip, for example. Like another one I keep saying, but I just like I enjoyed it so much while it was allowed, um, which was Geyer using it as her her abilities worked with it without ever having to like use the book itself. It was, ex it was extremely nice whenever we had that kind of cascading armor strip on a Warframe who's so close to not needing an armor strip like Geyer. Well, I suppose something like that could also be rectified simply by buffing Geyer. Uh, but we're not quite there yet, I suppose. You can see the kill rate here, like, really not doing too bad. We're, like, what, two, minute, two minutes in, and we're at, like, 143 enemies, which is totally respectable, actually. It's not like this weapon is like a chaining weapon. It is, of course, AOE. Um, but it's not doing like traditionally what we see like a lot of like, you know, the very strongest uh, secondaries do, which is like the chaining and such, of course. Yeah, I've, see I've just seen like a lot of people pretty unhappy with the Grimoire, and I think that it's 
I think that it's definitely nuts. just not not correct. I think it's a very good weapon. I think this is in line with like the Nataruk. Obviously, not as much upfront damage as the Nataruk. But like the utility aspects and such that this weapon has, uh, I think they are important. And and are like a good a good value for this weapon to have. Obviously, they are earned. Uh, the weapon doesn't just come with all of the canticles uh, and all the invocations. Which I think maybe is why people are a little disappointed with the grimoire. I think like if if like you know we were just given at least like a, at least like maybe like one invocation, one canticle to start. Uh, that might you know change people's opinion on it a bit, but um, that could very well be why like the opinion on it seems like kind of rough. I also do think though, whenever you pick it up in the um, in the mission, whatever it's like auto statted to for that mission that you pick it up, it slaps very very hard compared to uh, even whenever it's fully modded. So that could also be a factor with it as well. See, obviously, I'm not having any energy problems, though I'm not casting very much. <laughs> there, what? Four minutes and some change. At five minutes, I'll see where our kill rate's at. I mean, like, you know, kind of, kind of beating a being a dead horse there, but uh, I do, I do think that, like, with um, are you there? With the utility add that this weapon has, I think that there's there's no problems with the performance of this weapon, really. Oh, five minutes, three fifty eight, which is honestly not too bad. If I squinched myself into a hallway a little more, I probably could make that even a little higher, but. You know. And, and if you wanted to, like, mainly use this weapon, great options for that. If you're, like, a Wisp player, especially if you're a Wisp player that uses an armor strip, you're never going to have problems with this weapon. The fire rate that you get, like, you know, Warframes that boost fire rate a whole lot, very big fans of this weapon. Uh, they can use it no problem. We'll have to grab some life support here. But I do at least want to show it up against an Acolyte. <clears throat> yeah, is is it the next Latum? No. But I, I think anyone who was, like, expecting, you know, a new quest weapon to be as good as the Latum... Nah, I don't know about that one. Like, I think, like, the Incarnate system and those weapons to show off a, a, a whole kind of different thing a little bit. Obviously not a fantastic enemy to show this against, because we might not see a lot of its damage if I die. Turning off my abilities, because he is a punk. There you go. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly not even bad. Like, is it like, you know, the instant kill performance that you see from some weapons? No. And it is, of course, a very heavily invested build, but, you know, if you're fresh out of regular path, jumping in to steel path for the first time, I think this is totally serviceable. Is it the best you can do? No. But, like, you don't need the best you can do. You need a weapon that can do it at all. Uh, and I definitely think that this is one. Like, especially if you just need, like, kind of, you know, un unlimited... Oh, where's my weapon? You took my book. Especially if you just need, like, unlimited ammo weapon to do, uh, say, for example, your Archons. 
Uh, you have unlimited ammo. You can just, like, fire it at the Archon for as, as long as it takes. You don't have to worry about ammo conservation or your build being perfect. You're just like, well, I'm a Warframe that can survive, and I'm going to be here a while. And the book can get that done, and that's okay. You only need to do Archons once a week if you want the shards to power up your Warframes more. And, like, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm happy with the book. I think that this is totally fine. Totally fine. I'm happy with it for a quest reward. It's not like... I don't know. I've seen some people say it's like the same as the Broken Scepter, which is not... I just don't think that's true at all. And like, even beyond that, like, I like its animations. Um, it's like... I think there's a lot of design space that's open here to talk about that. Like, the design space of, like, oh, an alt fire that is essentially, like, a spell cast, and a primary fire that is also a spell cast. Like, you can fill out, like, a lot of, like, interesting things with that. Uh, for example, I think a really, really cool one that we could get for, you know, if we wanted to, get, if we were ever going to get a second spell book, uh, would be getting the Tales of Duviri as a, like, book weapon. Uh, and getting some, like, cool powers, like, thematic to that. Like, maybe getting, like, the angel spikes. Um, or, like, you know. I guess that would be more of, like, a, a Zaramon book as opposed to uh, a Duviri book. But, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much design space there with, like, interesting things they could do. Or, like, you could, like, summon uh, some Dax from from uh, from Duviri or something. Or, like, there's, there's so much design space and cool stuff there. Uh, that like I, I hope I hope we get more of the books. I think they are very very neat, uh, and I think people at, at the very least I have seen not a person say anything bad visually about the new book. I think that it's very fun. Uh, but yeah, oh overall, it's a good thing. I like it. It'll probably pop up in some builds as like a cool option to like either hit some thresholds or get some additional power. Um, and it's just generally like a nice thing to have in the arsenal. Uh, although. Like I said earlier, not exactly a nice thing to farm. That mirror defense, that that whole the, the whole the whole rewards with the new mirror defense really need to look at. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it. Good thing, good book, good thing, a good read, if you will. All right, whispers in the walls has arrived, which means many new guides are on the horizon. Uh, and thank you very much to all of my patrons for the support, especially $10 patrons, Alex Parnum, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Pnuvin, Automatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Kane Alathra, Dylan Dorsky, Thrain, Mafon, James Harsthorn, Casey for Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lord Acorn, Lou Zanth, uh, Mikkelkel, Inti Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Remoxidate, Sharp, Camerolic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Tomeworm, Victor Palmer, Waifu Wars, and Wildad 1. Uh, and also, of course, Thank you very much to all of my $5 patrons as well. It is much appreciated. Uh, lots of new guides coming with Wizards in the Walls. And also, uh, they changed new player progression again. So I need to redo the CPR that did just release. Uh, but that shouldn't take too much time. And we should have an updated new player guide uh, for the entire chunk that's already out very, very soon. Uh, they did improve it, though. So good stuff.